Ben again with Swift English. So I wanted to take a look at the previous response I you know, went over, I produced for you guys in my last clip. So the focus of today's lesson is what to do if you have one or two minutes left at the end of your TOEFL writing task two academic discussion response, right? So let's say you typed up your response like I have here and you have just one or two minutes maybe even less than that. So uh, if uh, that's the case for you, time didn't run out, consider you know fixing your mistakes. Like, do you have any typos? Do you have any grammar-related mistakes? Did you mess up the tenses? Or were you repeating yourself a lot? So let's take a look at this response. While John and Mary bring up some valid points about why people are pushed to do more charitable work, I think that a lot of people... So common mistake... Uh, a lot of people make is they use the same nouns and verbs and adjectives over and over and over again. So in this case, you might you know find yourself in this situation sometimes. It happens out of habit, right? So here I have people that I kind of repeated myself. I said people again. So instead of people, I could have used individuals. You know, so practice using these words. Mainly because of altruism. First of all, so a reason sentence, right? Many people. So at this point, if you don't have any other words, you know, you could come back to people. You did take a break from it because you already use individuals. But if you have a third word, show off, go for it. So here I could say something like, um, and may maybe some is more accurate, right? So some folks. This is an uncommon one, but you could use it uh, as a substitute for people if you're tired of using people and individuals a million times. So try to help others because according to research, there's a part of the brain that becomes stimulated uh -huh, whenever people are trying to support others. Okay, so that's fine. <coughs> as a matter of fact, according to some recent research, now you'll notice like we have kind of research here and here again. Maybe you can change, you know, one of these. You could say, according to some scientists, right? And then uh, that would fix this right here. So anytime you're referring to studies or research, it, you could kind of paraphrase in this matter. And I could have used studies here as well, you know, according to some studies, da, da, da. You know, play around with it, see which words are more comfortable for you. All right, so the part of the brain that is, so again, you can see part of the brain, part of the brain, maybe I accidentally, you know, kind of said the same thing already. So how can we fix this? So with this phrase, we could say like the area of the brain, you know, a particular region of the brain. So think about like how you can change it here, right? Uh, that is associated with social bonding is what lights up. As a result, people who act in, so... Maybe you could even use humans, up to you, who act in altruistic ways, are more likely to feel happier and healthier, whatever, they try to help out others. Um, okay, so, uh, and maybe if you said help out a lot, you could say, you know, something like uh, to support others or something. On top of that, a lot of people are encouraged to get involved in charitable acts since they feel a positive energy. Maybe here I'm not clear. I can make this a little bit more clear. So since they feel a positive energy uh, flow inside them. See? So be as specific and as detailed as possible. For instance, I remember one time I decided to volunteer at a homeless shelter and help feed the needy. At the time, I was pouring soup for the homeless in a nearby homeless shelter. So maybe if you use the same adjectives again, maybe just consider saying the same thing again. So if we don't know another word for shelter, just remove that adjective. And that actually does count as a paraphrase. Therefore, I felt really different anytime I was trying to help them. Um, so here you could maybe change help them to aid them if you want. It felt like some kind of positive or warm energy. Uh, had, maybe I'm missing this verb, had entered my body. And you could even say, you know, mind. You could add more words if you want. This made me feel quite calm and relaxed. To sum up, although some people are moved to do more. Now, with the calm and relax, um, you could even 
sometimes change it to a better adjective. You could say, this made me feel quite, um, you know, satisfied or something and at ease or something. So this is up to you. And we go through the rest of it. Let's say, you know, it's fine. We we don't want to change the rest of it. So the thing is, you're not going to have sufficient time to make all these corrections. It's just impossible. But if you do have one minute left, uh, two minutes, if you're a super fast typer like I am, you know, just try your best to fix as many of them as you can. Uh, Most of my students, uh, I've noticed on average, they're able to fix three or four of these kinds of mistakes. You're not going to be able to fix like, you know, seven, eight, ten of them uh, most of the time. It's just, there's not enough time. But just do your best and go back and fix some of these mistakes. The most common ones I've seen are usually typos, spelling mistakes again, and um, word choice. They're just, you know, using the same vocab over and over and over again. So those are the easiest ones to fix. But um, maybe in your case, it might be related to grammar or some other issue. But the more you practice, you'll get used to this. See you guys in the next one. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel.